let me now give you two examples of the disruptive transformations that emerge from this science. The first one is called the global carbon law. We recognize that the only chance to really deliver a future within a safe boundary on climate is an exponential journey to decarbonize the world economy. It builds on a new scientific idea of connecting the science and what we have to accomplish with the Gordon Moore's law from 1960s, early 1960s, where Gordon Moore stipulated, you know, the founder of Intel, that as a self-fulfilling prophecy, it became a self-fulfilling prophecy that the speed of conductors and transistors on computers would double the speed on computers every 18 to 24th month, which is actually a path that we've followed as an innovation pathway in the whole ICT industry, perhaps the most disruptive industry in the world. Well, we published half a year back something that we call the Global Carbon Law, which we hope can be the equivalent of the Moore's Law. And it goes as follows. This is what we have to accomplish to deliver Paris. And this is a summary of the IPCC, Intergovernmental Panel Climate Change Curves. On the y-axis, you have emission of greenhouse gases in terms of carbon dioxide. And on the x-axis is time from today until end of century. The first insight is we have to bend the curve of emissions no later than 2020 and then rush down in a pace of 6-7% reductions per year of emissions to become essentially a fossil fuel-free world economy by mid-century. But that's not enough. To achieve Paris, we also have to transform the brown line you may see there, which is agriculture, from being the single largest net source of greenhouse gases to becoming, in the next half of the century, the single largest sink of carbon. This is nothing less than an agricultural revolution. The interesting thing is, and we've been discussing it so much the last few days, we know how to do it. But that's not enough. The third insight is that, I'm sorry to say, there are no climate science scenarios that takes us to Paris that do not include what you see on the screen here, which is major investments and scaling of carbon capture and storage. This assumption that we can engineer ourselves to add sucking up carbon dioxide and retrofitting uh, coal-fired plants to take up carbon dioxide. We have no proof that this is happening. I would argue that this is something that is very dangerous to rely too deeply on. But not even that is enough, because finally, and perhaps most importantly, we have to maintain ecosystem integrity. We have to be guardians of our ecosystems to maintain the resilience and the negative carbon sinks on land and in oceans, shown here in green and blue. And if we do all of this, decarbonize energy system, transform agriculture, scale CCS, and really become stewards of ecosystems, we have a 66% chance of staying under two. So, dear friends, <laughs> it is a global sustainability transformation. We're in a disruptive point where we have everything to win to really take an integrated approach. Never isolate Paris to just being an energy transition. Now the exciting thing is that this gray curve you see there happened to translate into a carbon law, which is very simple. And it goes as follows. The carbon law equivalent of the Moore's law is halving emissions every decade can take us to Paris. It means bending the curve by 2020 at 40 gigatons, reaching 20 by 2030, 10 by 2040, and the residual of five by 2050. That pace, halving emissions every decade, is the pathway we need to follow. This has now started to be adopted by businesses around the world. We're discussing it with governments. We're taking it to the Global Climate Action Summit that Jerry Brown, governor in California, is hosting in San Francisco in September, getting the CEOs of the large disruptive ICT industries to adopt the carbon law and spread it around the world with the idea of really making it a global, manifested, campaign journey towards halving emissions every decade. So this is one example of something that, that could really start taking us disruptively in the right direction.